Hello everybody, I'm Lance Koike, and today I want to talk about getting everything you can out of your row. So if you watched the previous 15 or so videos, we've talked about rowing, different variations of rowing, and fixing common flaws in rowing. Those things came to my mind first because we generally address them first. I think it's important to get your setup right before you try to do movements. Okay, but I don't want to sell this <laughs> this rowing arm short. It messes up too. So once you've watched those other videos and you've mastered this setup where you've kind of got your weight secured over on the setup side and you feel that ab, um, then you have to look at what the arm is doing. And oftentimes when you're thinking so much about the setup, it's really easy to mess up the row biggest place that people are going to mess it up is they just don't do it all. So they'll do, it'll look something just like this. You see my shoulder kind of pokes forward, my elbow comes back, but my shoulder complex doesn't shift itself back. And what that does is it places more stress on the shoulder joint and less stress on the muscles responsible for rowing. So once you get this set up, if you notice yourself doing this row, you want to, I, I like to break people, break the movement up for people. So the big steps are shoulder comes back and then elbow follows. And I'll do it just like that. I'll do the opposite to come down and I'll do it stepwise like this. And it looks kind of weird, feels kind of weird, but it helps you kind of figure out the two different motions involved in rowing. And then once you kind of get the hang of it, you can try to smooth it out. Oftentimes people are worried about rotating too much. And I'll just, you know, I'm gonna say, you can rotate a little bit. I don't want you doing this, because that's not what we're doing here. We're not doing just a pure rotation exercise. We still wanna load that upper back and those arm muscles. Um, but a little bit is actually necessary to get the shoulder blade positioned where it needs to be so that the shoulder joint doesn't get overloaded like this. That one is really, really, really common. Um, I would definitely avoid it if you have any, um, well, if you're anyone, I would avoid it because it's suboptimal mechanics for muscle building and for longevity of training. But if you have slap lesions or glenoid labrum problems, I would definitely fix this as quickly as you can. Um, with that, you, you know, with this stuck shoulder position and then more elbow retraction rather than shoulder retraction, you just, you get more movement and more grinding and more pressure in the shoulder joint itself. Those are mechanics that you can simply fix with just a little bit of cueing. If you have really tight pecs, you're gonna find this motion kind of difficult. Um, that's why I really emphasize the setup first because you need to secure yourself with your abs so that your pecs can shut off and elongate. But since you're pulling them long, from both directions while rowing and while turning your abs on, sometimes you just run out of motion, right? They don't like to shut off all the time. In which case, it is okay to not row so far. You don't have to row up this high every time, uh, or every person doesn't have to row up that high, um, especially if you're compromising your positions to get it, right? So if you start to do some of this to get that extra little motion, um, even if you're getting the shoulder blade back and then you're tilting forward at the end to get the last little bit of motion, that is still suboptimal. That is still something that I don't want. I prefer you to train with less range of motion, but keep the tension on your muscles while you do it. So don't be afraid to take the weight down. Check your ego at the door. Don't be afraid to limit your range of motion. More is sometimes better, but not always. And make sure you kind of just, don't be afraid to be awkward when you're learning it, right? You can break it up into those movements. Shoulder comes back first, then elbow follows. And then from there, you can learn to smooth it out, okay? But mastering not only the setup, but also the rowing mechanics is 
very important. <laughs> okay, this is one of our fundamental movement patterns. So I like to start with the three point supported dumbbell row because it places a lot of emphasis with that down arm that set up and it helps you get the core positioning that you need. And then doing one arm at a time makes the rowing a little bit easier to learn where you're actually taking your shoulder blade back and you can get a little bit of that rotation rather than not having that rotation available to you when you row with both arms. So consider that. I would suggest starting with a three-point supported dumbbell row. I would suggest watching some other videos to make sure you're setting up correctly. And then I would suggest you know, check your ego at the door, choose an appropriate weight, don't do too many reps, don't try to squeeze too far, and just make sure that you're feeling it where you're supposed to be feeling it.